おれたちが起こるその背景にはおれたち黒人と白人の貧富の格差があるんだ On June 7th, 2020, the Japanese public broadcaster NHK released a video of only about 80 seconds in length. The video,、uh, which was rendered in an animated style, depicted black Americans in a caricatured form and was widely and quickly reviled as racist. NHK apologized and retracted the video. But the damage had been done. The question is why did NHK feel that it was okay to release this particular video? What were the things that allowed them to depict the protests that were then erupting in the United States in such a controversial fashion? My name is Jolian Thomas. I'm an assistant professor of religious studies at the University of Pennsylvania, and I specialize in the study of the religions of Japan and particularly in media. And religion. What I want to talk about today is how、uh, these depictions came to be, and I also want to talk about what we can do to make sure that these sorts of depictions don't occur in the future. So, one of the things that I want to stress right at the outset is that、uh, the white supremacist、uh, understandings of Black America that we see、uh, depicted in the NHK video、um, are not uncommon. Anybody who has spent significant amounts of time in Japan will know that it's not uncommon to step into a cafe and be confronted with、uh, minstrel kitsch.、Uh, and it's not uncommon for those of us who are Black Americans living in Japan、uh, to be、uh, racially profiled by police,、uh, to be stopped and harassed, and so forth. It's also not uncommon、um, for those of you who may be fans of things like manga and anime. To see uh, stereotyped uh, caricatures of black people、um, in、uh, series and, and shows and stuff that, that you may be familiar with. So, what's to blame? Well, for one thing,、uh, we have the depictions of black Americans that appear in Hollywood and that are、uh, then transmitted to Japan through、uh, you know, the sort of translation and, and global dissemination of. Uh, of you know, mediated images of, of Black Americans. That's one thing. But another thing is that throughout the long、um, period of time that Japan and the United States have had diplomatic relationships, so that's from the 1850s through today,、uh, it's been true that the people who have had the loudest voices and who have spoken most authoritatively about the United States to Japanese people have been white Americans. Indeed, Uh, as I discuss in my 2019 book on the American occupation of Japan that came at the end of World War II, it was widely assumed by people who are in leadership positions in the occupation that、uh, America, that the United States, was essentially what they called a white civilization. So,、uh, my point here is that、um, in this、uh, You know, century and a half long engagement between Japan and the United States. It has been the perspectives、uh, and the presuppositions of white Americans that have largely dominated the ways that Japanese people have understood the United States. The error that NHK acknowledged was that the video focused on income inequality without focusing on the violent precursor to the protests that were then taking place. Throughout the United States and have continued to take place since. In other words, NHK depicted black people as being violent while completely letting police off the hook. NHK's mistake may be、uh, somewhat forgivable. After all, J- Japanese people don't live in the United States. The people making the video may not have been familiar with US political dynamics and certainly may have been unfamiliar with US history. Um, beyond the broadest brushstrokes. But one of the things that's really striking about NHK's video is that it's precisely the way some media outlets in the United States are also depicting the protests going on in the wake of the killings of George Floyd,、uh, Ahmaud Arbery, and Breonna Taylor, among many, many others. So,、uh, what I want to draw attention to here is the assumption that. Quote unquote, civil unrest、uh, is 
somehow violent and that that violence is the problem, that the violence of protest is the problem and not the violence of police. We have had a long period of time in which police have had opportunities to show that they will not racially profile black Americans, that they will give everybody a fair judicial process, that everybody would be assumed innocent until they are actually proven guilty. But what we've seen, uh, and again, this has been happening throughout this summer, uh, most recently with the shooting of Jacob Blake, is that many black Americans are assumed guilty and are actually subjected to capital punishment long before there's any evidence of a crime and far before any jury trial. So the question is, what can I do? One of the things that I want to draw attention to is that uh, it really matters what language we use to describe the protests that have been happening in the United States. It matters how we characterize things. If you're a white American and you're inclined to refer to the protests as everything going on, then I encourage you, in fact, I challenge you to think about reframing that. It's not everything going on. Let's name it for what it is. It's the extrajudicial murder of citizens by police. If you're inclined to think about the protesters as being a problem because they may, some of them uh, may have damaged some property, then I ask you to reframe. Are you saying that property is more valuable than people's lives? If you are, if that's your claim, then you're part of the problem. So what I'm talking about here is uh, what will actually come to some people as being a very difficult uh, mode of reframing our way of understanding the world. Black people are dying. Black people are dying at the hands of police and police are getting away with it time and time again. And part of the reason police are getting away with it is because of these everyday phrases that we use. It's not everything that's going on. It's this cop killed that black man without reading him his Miranda rights. It's this cop barged into that woman's home while she was sleeping and shot her dead. It's this man may have been in the wrong, but he still had a right to a fair trial, not to just being summarily executed. One of the things that's hardest to do is to break habits. But one of the things that's easiest to do with habits is to just start trying. Although NHK's video uh, may seem to be an outlier, it may seem to be uh, a problem that exists overseas. In fact, this Japanese video is reflecting back to us the ugly version of ourselves. It's showing us exactly how we look. It's giving us an opportunity to look in the mirror and to see just how screwed up our dynamics are socially, politically, and so forth. NHK is not wrong to say that economic uh, disparity is a major problem in the United States, but NHK was certainly wrong to downplay the violent extrajudicial murder of black people at the hands of police. We need to do better. And it starts by just learning how to think slightly differently.